If one confused word can gum up social policies, the legal system, and innumerable institutions throughout society, that word is equality. It is one of those vague pieties in which we indulge ourselves, without any serious thought as to what it means or what the actual consequences of pursuing it may be. Anyone who questions or opposes equality is almost certain to be regarded as someone who believes in inequality, in inferiority and superiority. But all of these concepts suffer from the same problem. For equality, inferiority, or superiority to have any meaning, what is being compared must first be commensurable. A symphony is not equal to an automobile, nor is it inferior or superior. They are simply not commensurable. Much of the emotional struggle to make women equal to men suffers from the same problem. So long as women have babies and men do not, the many ramifications of that difference cannot be ignored, and nothing can make them commensurable. However unisex one's language may be, women are seldom very good men, and men cannot be women at all. We may regard the happiness and well-being of women as equally important as the happiness and well-being of men, and probably most people do, despite shrill cries to the contrary, but that is a statement about our value system, not about some empirical reality of women and men. With many other groups as well, the fundamental difference between equal treatment and equal performance is repeatedly confused. In performance terms, virtually no one is equal to anyone. The same individual is not even equal to himself on different days. Much of the moral heart-burnings, social engineering, and legal entanglements of our times comes from the simple fact that statistics for different groups are different in different occupations, institutions, or income levels. It is too often assumed automatically that only different treatment before the fact can explain different results after the fact. This dogma is so deeply embedded that it seems almost utopian to attempt a rational discussion of it, yet it was wholly arbitrary to have expected performance equality in the first place and compounded pig-headedness to want to punish someone because it didn't happen. But there is a whole class of people who believe that when the world doesn't conform to their theory, that shows that something is wrong with the world. Let us go back to the fact that women have babies, a fact of no small importance to those of us parochial enough to be concerned about the survival of the human species. Not only do women have babies, they realize in advance that they are likely to have babies and those who are not yet liberated arrange their lives with that prospect in mind. Occupations which require continuous employment to maintain ever-changing skills tend to attract fewer women than occupations you can leave to have children and return to later. You can take a few years off to see your children through the preschool years and then return to become a good librarian, teacher, or editor, but take a few years off from computer engineering and you will return to find that you are not in Kansas anymore, Toto. Some years ago, an economist investigated the rates of obsolescence of a wide range of occupations. A physicist lost half the value of his original knowledge in about five years, while it would take a historian more than thirty years to fall that far behind. Although the economist did not point this out, whether through oversight or prudence, the occupations with high rates of obsolescence were often male-dominated, while the occupations that are heavily female tended to have slow rates of obsolescence. Although differences in choices and performances are ignored or dismissed in politically correct quarters, such differences obviously affect differences in outcomes, not only as between men and women, but among racial, ethnic, and other groups as well. Since it is truly utopian to expect to have a rational discussion of interracial differences in these times, we can look at two branches of the same race, Northern Europeans and Southern Europeans. For the past few centuries, Northern Europeans have been far more advanced industrially and technologically than Southern Europeans, not only in Europe itself, but also when they immigrate to European offshoot societies in the Western Hemisphere or Australia. But for a thousand years or so before that, Southern Europeans were far more advanced than Northern Europeans. In short, performances vary not only from individual to individual, 
but also from group to group and from one era to another. Seldom are performances equal at any given moment. In performance terms, Japan was decidedly inferior to the West in industrial technology a century ago. No one was more painfully aware of this than the Japanese themselves. That is what spurred them on to the efforts which have enabled them to overtake the West in many fields today. They understood that this was not a problem that could be solved by lofty talk or arbitrary presuppositions.